Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with a video about 2024 knitting trends. Now these are not really knitting trends, they are more so fashion trends, but I took inspiration from them to find you some knitting patterns if you want to recreate any of these fashion trends. I have about five trends to show you and in total that is 24 knitting patterns. So we better just get started with this video or else it's going to be quite a long one. So the first trend that I have for you is the preppy trend. So maybe you have already seen this, but a lot of people are wearing more preppy styled clothing. I saw a lot of polo stripes, so in navy, white or black and white. Then there are also a lot of people right now wearing the colored shirts, the polo shirts. So when I looked at some popular clothing websites, I definitely saw a lot of these pieces pop up. So you can wear the preppy trends in multiple ways. The first one, like I said, is to have a colored shirt, to have stripes, but then I also saw a lot of boucle cardigans and also a lot of sweaters or tops that had a big color with ruffles. So then it's a little bit more on the, well, to say feminine side or curly side. For the boucle cardigan, I do have three patterns that you can knit. The first one is the Audrey jacket by Coco Amor. This is knit in a bulky weight yarn on five millimeter needles and it comes in 11 sizes. The size range will fit a 75 to a 150 centimeter bust. Then it's knit in Gepard Garn Teddy Bear and then the ribbing is done in a different yarn which also really suits this trend because a lot of these cardigans actually have the ribbing in a contrasting color. So for example black and white or the other way around. Then the next one is the Emily jacket from Sari Nordland. This one is also knit in a bulky weight yarn on 5mm needles. She also uses the Gepard Garn Teddy Bear funnily enough. The Emily jacket comes in 9 sizes to fit a 90cm bust to a 170cm bust. So it is more size inclusive than the previous one. And then another really nice thing about this pattern is that she has made two different samples. And one is lighter and one is heavier. So you can find whichever one will suit you best. And then the final boucle cardigan pattern is the Dolly Cardigan by Mochi Knits. The Dolly cardigan is knit on 6mm needles with drops alpaca bloquet held double. Then this pattern comes in 7 sizes, ranging from an 82cm bust to a 126cm bust. So in that sense it's not size inclusive at all. So the only reason really to choose it in my opinion is if you wanted to do this specific yarn. Then like I said the next possibility to take on the preppy trend is to have big colors or contrasting colors. And just really frilly cute things overall. The first pattern that I've chosen is not really a color, but I thought it was a really good alternative for if you want to take inspiration from this trend, but then a ruffle color is not really necessarily your thing. So this is the Vintage Frill Socks by Camille K. But it's a really cute pattern if you just want to have a little inspiration from this trend. So she uses a cotton embroidery band or trim that she then knits into the socks, which creates a really cute effect. And they look a little bit more store-bought to me. It comes in quite a bit sizes, so from a 35 European to a 44 European. And then she knits it on 2.25 millimeter needles with the Long Yarn Schiavol sock yarn, which is a really nice sock yarn. Then I have three garment patterns that you could use for this trend. The first one is the Chantilly Vest by Laura Penrose. This is a really cute pattern with a lower v-neck and then the big ruffly color. She made this on 5.5 millimeter needles. This pattern comes in 10 sizes ranging from a 73 centimeter bust to a 162 centimeter bust. So it is a size inclusive pattern. And then just a little bit more about the yarn. It's actually two strands of light fingering weight held together with one strand of silk mohair. Then if a vest is not really your thing, she also has this pattern in a cardigan version which is also knit on 5.5 millimeter needles with the same exact yarn. And it also comes in 10 sizes, ranging from a 75 centimeter bust to a 170 centimeter bust. So the size range is a little bit bigger in that sense. Then the next option for a garment would be the Claudine Cardigan by Trico MCL Design. This one is a little bit more subtle because it just has a little bit of a smaller color. And then I think the fit in general is very classic and elegant. She knit this on 4.5 mm needles with a DK weight yarn. Then this pattern comes in 9 different sizes, ranging from an 85 cm bust to a 164 cm bust. Now do keep in mind that this is the finished bust measurement, so you do have to take the ease in mind that you want out of this garment. I believe she wears it with 0 to 8 cm of positive ease. 
So it is still, I would say, size inclusive in that sense. Now, if you don't want to go all out with this trend and just have something subtle and smaller to knit, then I would suggest knitting just the collar instead of the entire sweater. So the first pattern that I have picked for that is the Lila collar by Sanneskarn Design. I actually have this pattern because it comes in a booklet, which is how Sanneskarn always works. So this is in the Sanneskarn 2311 DIY Volume 2. Then this pattern is knit in a DK weight yarn held together with a lace weight yarn on 3.5 millimeter needles. And it of course only comes in one size because it's a color, so it's adjustable. And I really love that this pattern also has some bubbles and lace combined. Bubbles are one of my favorite things. So I do really think that I need to actually knit this one because it's a really nice pattern. And then the next one is if you're more daring or courageous, and it's the Courtesy Collar by Park and Knit. This one is knit with a lace weight yarn. It's very mohairy and it has just a really nice big shape, like very 70s pointed shape. Then it's knit on 5.5 millimeter needles. And this one actually comes in three sizes from a child, an adult, small, medium, and then adult, large, extra large. And I think it's actually really cool that it also comes in a child size. I can imagine that to be very cute on a child. I think these colors are also really nice to have as a scrap busting project. Just if you have some leftover yarn, you can make this. And I can imagine making it in different types of colors if that's your thing. I think it's a really nice pattern to have in your library. Then the next trend is maybe one that you're already familiar with and it's kind of the ballet core trend, which I really don't like that name, but it's the best one to describe this trend with. And you can recognize this trend from the bows and things that you would wear after a ballet class, which is why it's ballet core. I think that's also why a lot of people have started to wear ballet flats again, which really reminds me of, I don't know, 2010, but they are back just like everything in fashion comes back around. So the first garment that you can make for this trend is a wrap cardigan. There are different versions of this. You can do something more oversized or something more form-fitting. I would say something more form-fitting is more ballet trend and something more oversized is perhaps more wearable in that sense. So the patterns that I have picked out for the trend is one that's very popular. It's the Levitate Wrap by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I think a lot of people know this pattern, but I wanted to share it anyways in case you want a more oversized version of a wrap cardigan. This one is knit on 6mm needles with an Aran weight yarn. Then this pattern is sadly not very size inclusive. It only comes in 8 sizes and then the finished bust circumference is 115cm to 152cm. Now keep in mind that this garment is intended to have a positive ease of 30 to 35 centimeters. So by far it's the least size inclusive pattern that I've probably seen so far. So that is a very sad thing. And then the next pattern is totally different from that because it's a form-fitting ripped wrap cardigan. This one also comes in eight sizes ranging from a finished chest circumference of 65 centimeters to 116 centimeters. The intended negative ease for this garment is around 15 centimeters. So again, it's sadly not a size inclusive pattern, but it is out there and it's knit on four millimeter needles, knit with knitting for olive merino with soft silk mohair. So a fingering weight yarn held together with a lace weight yarn. But then here comes maybe a better alternative. It's one of my favorite pattern designers, Furt and Rose. And she has the Zosia wrap cardigan. This one is knit on four and a half millimeter needles with the drops brushed alpaca silk yarn which technically is an airway weight yarn, but I feel like it's a kind of all over the place yarn. Yes, you could use it as an airway weight yarn, but you can also use it as a lace weight yarn. This pattern comes in nine sizes, ranging from a 90 centimeter bust to a 160 centimeter bust. And this already includes the recommended positive ease of nine to 15 centimeters. So this one is more size inclusive than the previous ones, which is really nice. And I really like that this one is lace and also the bow that this makes in this yarn is just really pretty and really feminine and subtle and elegant and just all of the good things that I think you want in a wrap cardigan. And then the final wrap cardigan pattern is the Clint by Marty Set C. This one is knit on four and a half millimeter needles with an Aran weight yarn. It comes in seven sizes ranging from a 82 centimeter bust to a 134 centimeter bust, which is the finished bust circumference. So again, we have a pattern that is not size inclusive, sadly. I did really my best to find nice size inclusive wrap cardigans, but I definitely saw that there aren't a lot of wrap cardigan patterns out there. So something to keep in mind, but maybe this is also something that you can figure out yourself if you want to make something like this. I also know Sari Nordland has a wrap cardigan, the Kutar cardigan, and she knits generally more size inclusive. So do check it out if you want something 
yeah, that, that will fit you if you are a larger bust. Then I have another category for the ballerina core trend, and that is bows. I've been seeing bows everywhere, also a lot of people wearing hair bows or bows on clothing. Just a lot of, a lot of bows all around. Sadly, I could not find a lot of knitting patterns that have bows in them, like bows on top of them, bows color work, bows in the construction. There really aren't a lot, in my opinion. But the first one that I found that I thought was really nice is the George's sweater by Colibri. This one is knit with multiple strands of lace weight yarn held together on 4.5mm needles. Then it comes in six sizes, ranging from a 90cm bust to a 130cm bust, which already includes, I think, the positive ease of 5 to 12 centimeters but i'm not sure because it's weirdly worded sadly but it is a beautiful sweater and i believe a lot of people get married in the specific pattern because it's really beautiful with an open back i think you can also reverse it and wear the bow in the front then the next three patterns are not a garment but something that is just a little quick accessory just like the previous one with the collar so the first one is the augustine's number 22 by augustine snitwear which is just a beautiful knitted bow, which she knits on 4mm needles with a fingering weight yarn held together with a mohair yarn. Alternatively, you could also knit the December bow by Petite Knit. I've never knit that pattern. I'm not sure about the specifics of it. I do believe that one is Carter Stitch, but that's also, yeah, something that you can knit. And I also believe a lot of people actually made these bows last year and put them in a Christmas tray, which is also really cute. So it's kind of multi-purpose in that sense. The next pattern is a little winter accessory and it's the Big Bow Bonnet by Park and Knit. This one is knit on 5mm needles with multiple strands of lace suede yarn held together. Then this one comes in a lot of sizes which is already so cute because it comes in a baby size, a toddler, child, adult, small, medium and large. And it's just really adorable with the really big bow as the name suggests. It's definitely not for everyone, it's a big statement piece in that sense. But I do think it's very lovely. And then the next pattern I actually really want to knit. I signed up for the test knit of this one, but I didn't get chosen. But it's the Cozy Coco Hood by Veronica Lindberg or Kutufa Kika. She knit this on 4.5mm needles with a TK weight yarn held together with a mohair yarn. This one only comes in one size, but I think or I would assume that it fits a lot of different people. Then it has a all over honeycomb stitch, which I do find a little bit of a pain to knit sometimes but it's very cute the end result and i really like that this one has a double knitted bow and so it's a little bit more structured and thick and warm probably than the previous one then the next fashion trend is what british folk refer to as a crafty look which kind of just means a lot of things that you see well yeah as a crafter so fair aisle crochet just a lot of elements together they also were talking about laser cut which is obviously not something that we do in the crafting community but this trend is probably the easiest one to recreate as a knitter or crocheter so the first brand that really popped into my head is knit collage if you're unfamiliar with knit collage they make their own yarn so they hand spun yarn in India and they usually have yarn with a lot of different textures or colors in them. So for example, they use a lot of Stellina, so it has gold and silver threads mixed out. I actually knit a lot of knit collage when I first started knitting, probably a few years ago. It is quite expensive and pricey, but I did think it was very rewarding when I started knitting this way. Because they have a lot of video tutorials, they do make-alongs every year. One of the first garments that I actually knit was the flower power cardigan which is an intarsia color work cardigan so it's definitely not something that you think is well suited for a beginner so I would really recommend knit collage if you're a beginner they have a few patterns also on their website so one that I think really suits this trend is the Corrine cardi pattern which is a combination of crochet and knit so the front and back is crochet granny squares and then the sleeves are knitted. And this one is especially very cute because they use some specific yarn of theirs, which is a cotton sari yarn. It really creates a very different and unique look. Then the next pattern is a sweater pattern with a very unique stitch. This is the Antrelac stitch, which I've never done. I'm very curious actually to how you would knit this, but it really creates a very crafty look, especially like I said in their yarn, you can see that this really is their whole brand image. They do a lot of different kinds of colors and textures together. Then the next pattern is a Fair Isle sweater, also from Knit Collage, which they have knit in their Serenity yarn, which is kind of a blue clay yarn. Also do keep in mind that most of Knit Collage, their patterns are bulky weight. They generally knit at, I think, ranging from eight millimeter to 12 millimeter needle. So in that sense, it's also more beginner friendly. I definitely only knit bulky weight things when I first started out. 
But this one is knit with thinner needles, so 6 millimeter needles, which I think is a bit nicer for people with more experience, I would say. I think with more experience, you start to go down in needle size generally. And then I did want to recommend one more brand that I thought about with the Crafty Trend. And it's actually a Dutch company. It's called MYPZ. I'm not sure what it stands for, but they actually also have their own yarn. They do hand dyed yarn and thick mohair types of yarn. So a lot of their sweater patterns are knit with their yarn specifically, but you could of course substitute it for any type of yarn that you want. I think their style is quite similar to knit collage. It's very colorful. Then they do crochet, they do stripes, knitting. I would just recommend checking them out because they are really nice. And then the final trend that I have is the rosette trend. So there are a lot of roses in all types of manner popping up in fashion. You have probably also seen the people that are wearing the little chokers around their neck with a rose. Probably like centered like this or the other way, just asymmetrical basically. So there is one pattern that you can use to recreate that. And it's actually a free pattern by Sonne Skarn and it's just called Rose. It is a crochet pattern that they made in their Mandarin Petite yarn, which is a cotton yarn. And then they used a four millimeter crochet hook. I'm not really good with crochet, so I'm not sure if I would be able to do this. I only really knit granny squares or granny stripe or anything. Granny is what, what is in my skill set. But I do think it's really nice. And if you're more experienced or just wanting to have this then you can make it. The next pattern is definitely for someone that is more experienced in crochet, but I did want to mention this pattern because it's absolutely gorgeous. It is called the Rose Garden Jacket by TS Crochet Design. This is knit with, oh, it's not knit. This one is crocheted with a cotton yarn, an iron weight, and she uses a five millimeter hook. And it's just the most beautiful and special thing because the roses are 3D. It's very unique. It's not for everyone, but if you're willing to go all out with this rosette trend, then this one is definitely for you. Then the next three patterns are knitting patterns, which is what most of this video is about. This one is called the Blad Flower Sweater by Tati Lutzek. This one is knit in a DK weight yarn on three and a half millimeter needles. It's stranded color work, which is really nice. And I think this one still really suits the rosette trend, maybe a little bit less obvious, but definitely more wearable. I happen to also have seen a lot of sweaters that have a more almost like a watercolor painting design in floral motif. And I think this pattern suits that watercolor trend really well, especially if you use some yarns that are less in contrast, then they will just really bleed or fade into each other, which I think would be very beautiful. And it also makes it a little bit more wearable, in my opinion. This pattern comes in nine sizes, ranging from a finished bus circumference of 93 centimeters to a 170 centimeters, which includes the positive ease that is recommended of 15 centimeters. The next two knitting patterns are from a knitting designer that is new to me, and they are called Paul TB. And this specific sweater is called the Rosier. This is knit with a fingering weight yarn on 3.75 millimeter needles. And this is a stranded all over color work sweater. And this pattern comes in eight sizes, ranging from an 88 centimeter bust to a 167 centimeter bust. And then the next pattern I thought was so unique and it's called the Rye Fleurs. This one is knit on four and a half millimeter needles with a DK weight yarn. I think most of this design is done with embroidery and I'm not sure how to go about it. I'm not an experienced embroidery artist or person at all, but it's just so special. And I think this is a very wearable version of the rosette trend. Then this pattern comes in seven sizes with a bust circumference of 102 to 168 centimeters. So those were all of the knitting patterns and knitting trends that I wanted to mention in this video. I really hope that you were able to take some inspiration from this, or maybe that you learned about some new knitting patterns or knitting designers. Then my next video will be this Friday. So I'm looking forward to seeing you then. And for now, I wish you all a very happy day, happy knitting, and that is all. So, bye-bye.